छोट्या छोट्या गोष्टी वरून आपल्यात झालेली भांडण धरलेलं अबोला आणि नंतर चाल्या किती भाव So, I'm delighted to be here this uh, morning to share some of my thoughts, ideas, experiences and concepts. So it's, uh, it's been a long journey. I became a student of anthropomaximology. I don't know how many of you know this word anthropomaximology. Okay, it's a, a study of higher potential of human beings. So you know all medical students I love using some of these jargon words which uh, everybody doesn't know. But anthropomaximology is a study of higher potential of human beings, which really means what are you and I capable of doing? So 35 years back when I was sitting there, I just didn't know what I was capable of doing. And I had to struggle to these three and a half decades to find out what is possible in my life. So uh, as Asha also mentioned, do not underestimate your power and do not listen to anybody else. Can I? Uh, And then I also started studying teleology. Teleology is goal-centeredness. The reticular activating system, all of us know what that system is in our brain, you know, only follows things that you've decided to do. So you must take a call. Take, it's a corridor principle. You could change your path as you go. When better opportunities come in, start off with some goal. And like you walk down your corridor, you can actually see doors opening up so that you can go in and look for better opportunities. What I'm going to do is just take you through some slides to give an idea of what uh, is. So the only picture I really have during my convocation is that picture. <laughs> so, so I must advise you all, you know, this, this picture is one of my most precious pictures for two reasons. It's the convocation ceremony picture. And secondly, this is the only picture I had when I had a bit of, uh, you know, stubble, a beard in my face. So it was good to show my, you know, wife. I said, that I used to have a beard also. But take enough pictures. This will become a very good nostalgic memory for all of you. So before you get out. And as a parent, my, both my uh, children have finished medicine. And my daughter finished uh, five years back, my son finished last year. And it was such a proud moment sitting there. And so I must congratulate all the parents here because I know what I went through. <laughs> seeing, seeing my children, you know, getting their uh, convocation done. So I, you know, I used to, uh, I used to give talks on when Ghansham came to my office and said, you know, you have to give a talk for about 20 minutes. He said, what will be the title of your talk? I said, we can call it how to change your life in 20 minutes, you know. <laughs> and then I remembered in 2007, I was in Coimbatore. There was a conference by Pallani Vellu. He does, I don't know, Amit is here. Uh, you know, Pallani Vellu used to do conferences every year on laparoscopic surgery. I used to demonstrate surgery there. But in between the breaks, he used to ask me to give these talks. And one of the talks was how to change your life in 30 minutes. But uh, during the inauguration ceremony, a politician who was to cut the ribbon just continued talking. He wouldn't stop talking. And most of the surgeons, there were 1,250 of them, they started walking outside the auditorium. And sitting on the dais, I was uh, pretty disappointed. I said, oh my gosh, everybody is going away. You know? But the moment they announced my name and my talk started, everybody rushed in. And they were you know, wanting to sit in the front row seats to listen to me. So I turned to Dr. Rajan, who was sitting to me on the dais. He was the organizing secretary. I said, Rajan, they don't even know what I'm going to speak about. Why are they so excited to listen to me? So Khoimbatur, Dr. Rajan, in his dialect said, Sir, there's been a little problem. <laughs> I said, what happened? He said, Sir, they think you're going to speak on how to change your wife in 20 minutes. <laughs> So, I, I was feeling very sorry for them. The challenge today is, can you really design your success? Is there a science to success? And the question, big question is, why is one person more successful than another? And these questions intrigue me. So, uh, I started looking at, you know, can you actually organize yourself in the next 15, 20, 25 years to, you know, make a path where you can do reasonably well? So success has, you know, each one of you will have a different definition of success. I can't tell you how to uh, get you your success. But I can tell you the fundamentals, the basic premises which are necessary to achieve success. So quickly, let me take you through a few of them. 
Viktor Frankl said, most of us are going through life in an existential vacuum. He wrote this book, you know, The Meaning uh, of Life, Man's Search for Meaning of Life. And this existential vacuum means that you don't even know what you need out of life. What is the purpose of life? So we need to quickly find out what are we here for. Success is not something that you really pursue every day in the morning, get up, I want to become successful. Uh -huh. Success is something you attract by the person you become. So all the things that I'm going to talk about are what you can become to achieve success. That's what we look at. So what I share with you is uh, what we call retrospective science. So I've had a few years in my laparoscopy career. And uh, so I have learned you know, the hard way. And it can become a little success leaves clues. So if you go to somebody and say, go to Dr. Dalal, go to Dr. Mahadev and say, hey, what are the things that you did which helped you grow to this level? They tell you a few things. You learn from them and you make your path a little easier. You'll have your own hardships, but it's good. So this is the proverbial wall of success which you're trying to climb. The first basic rule is you cannot hire somebody else to do your push-ups. You have to do everything yourself. There is nobody out there who's going to come and help you. So there are various strategies. I picked up three of them. So I said, I call them the three rules of success. Neuroplasticity, your willpower, and thinking skills, or strategic thinking skills. But how do you go about applying these three? Bill Gates said this. He said, the only factory asset you need to do well in life is your imagination, your ideas. That's it. So never ever complain that I don't have enough resources, my parents don't know anybody, I come from a simple background. Because in 1991, when I wanted to go and learn, I had resigned as a lecturer from this hospital. I went up into private practice. And 91, I wanted to go and learn laparoscopic surgery in Kiel. Everybody wanted to go there. Uh, only one person had gone before me, good friend of mine, Prashant. And I asked Prashant, how do I go? He said, I buy a ticket, Bombay, London, London, Hamburg, from Hamburg, take a you know, bus and go to Kiel. And I got a letter of invitation. The problem started with, I didn't have money to buy my air ticket from Bombay, London, London, Hamburg and back. So I kept thinking of what to do. I went to my parents. My father was a school teacher. So I asked him, I said, hey, you know, I need to go for training in laparoscopy. He said, son, you'll have to organize for your money yourself. So guess what I did? The only position that I had, and I used to use this to come to Nair Hospital every single day, was my bullet, a Royal Enfield. I loved that bike. <laughs> That's my daughter who was, uh, I think, three or four years, uh, six years old at that time. And she used to love the bike also. I went ahead and sold off this bike. I said, okay, let me get my resource organized. So I got about 18 and a half thousand for it. That time this costed 20,000. I sold it for 18. I bought my ticket, went there, got my training, basic training done. Met some people in London, then got a clinical fellowship in London, 1993, 94. So everything followed after what I did with my motorcycle. So please never ever complain that I don't have resources, I don't have money. There are three excuses all of us keep using. I'm not good enough, so my talent is not very good and I'm an ordinary average student. Or I don't have the time or I don't have the money. Three excuses, never ever let them get into your way of climbing higher in life. So take responsibility. I'm going to come to the three rules, but the first basic thing is I love this uh, book. It says, you know, God does not play dice with human beings. So the genetic makeup, the 20,640 genes that you have in your 23 pairs of chromosomes is the same for everybody. All of us have got the same kind of genes. How we utilize these genes is the most important thing. You think this guy is going to decide how successful you're going to become in your life? How many of us believe that this guy will help you out? I was in uh, Allahabad for a conference and we went to see that Sangam. Anybody seen Sangam? Ganga, Jamna, Saraswati, where all of these rivers come and meet. So they take you there and this guy said, you know, Saab, kuch paise de do, aapka bhavishya bataenge, you know. And I was intrigued. I said, how is this guy going to tell me how many fibroid surgeries I'm going to do next month, you know. <laughs> how is this guy going to tell me how many hysterectomies I will do? The question is, none of these people can help you. When we went a little ahead, they, you know, put us into a boat. And there are some of my colleagues who were there. And they said, if you take this boat for investment of 15 bucks and you put it at the junction where Ganga and Jamna meet, all your wishes will be fulfilled, you know. So if you have goals in life, you know, let me tell you, go to Allahabad. <laughs> all your goals will be fulfilled. So 15 bucks investment, I was intelligence, you know, gynecologists are smart people. So I got two of them. 
I, I have two goals, so let me put two of these there. But how many of us really believe that these people are going to help us become successful in life? Or this guy, or this guy. Nobody is coming to your rescue to help you succeed in life. You have to take care of yourself. So stop all excuses. <laughs> I think any excuse that you may have, to, uh, you know, which you think is preventing you from getting ahead, stop criticizing people, stop blaming people. You know, that this guy did not want me to succeed in life. You know, I, uh, I run a lot. I run the marathon several times. And when I go to Juhu Beach to run, there is that aeroplane garden and linking road ka junction, if any of you live in the suburbs there, you know. So at that signal, there are small boys who come in and want to sell you something. And one day, I put my window down and I asked him, I said, what is this? He said, Saab, ek kharid lo and aapka bhavishya badal jayega, aapko koi taklif nahi aayegi, koi problem life mein nahi hoegi. So what was that? I bought it. I said, it costed me two rupees. And that was this. <laughs> And I said, if an investment of two rupees can help me succeed in life, why not pick it up, you know? And I said, if I sit in my consulting, maybe I'll be better at diagnosing problems. Or if I go into the operation theater, I may become better at doing my laparoscopic surgeries, you know? When I was going to drive off, this guy said, Saab, ek aur le lo na. I said, ek aur ka kya karunga, you know? He said, Saab, pichu bhi laga lena, you know? <laughs> so, I put a one behind also. Or you think if I get several of them and go into my operation theater, I will not damage ureters, Asha, ureters, bladders, bowel injuries, and you know, nothing because I am protected, you know. I think we must get out of these and believe in reality. What is really going to help us? You think this is going to help the, I asked the gas attendant, I said, yeah, yeah, kyo laga hai? Because I get interested. I tell you, I get charged whenever I see somebody on the road with Nimbu and Mirchi. I said, oh my gosh, you know, this is fantastic. I said, yeah, yeah, kyo laga hai? And you know what he said? He said, sir, here is the danger of the fire, so it will not be the fire from the fire. I said, put in some fire extinguisher, not Nimbu Mirchi, you know, this is not going to help. So get your priorities right. And there are, it's not, it's internationally. So this was in Istanbul, where they give you this and they say, you know, you know take care of everything. I said, we must become real. This guy is an astrologer. So if we believe that, you know, whatever is written in our destiny will come true. Somebody said beautifully, he said, Haathon ki lakiro par kabhi yakin na karna. Haathon ki lakiro par kabhi yakin na karna, kyunke takdeer unki bhi hoti hai, jinke haath nahi hoti. I think we have to grow up and say, look, I am going to create my future and the best way to predict your future is to create it yourself. Nobody else is going to help you do that. So quickly, neuroplasticity is learning and uh, there are only two kinds of people in this world, learners and those people outside who are non-learners. So we must remember that. Become a learner. Every successful person, you speak to him for two minutes and you get to know that this guy is a learner. He asks a lot of questions, you know. So keep learning. Now, learning is a couple of things. So this man, you know, we met him at uh, a center of excellence for minimum access surgery training program. He is a learner. He asked so many questions about three-dimensional laparoscopy. And I was surprised. I said, how should he be interested in three-dimensional laparoscopy? But he wanted to know. So I think we must pick up learning. Okay, so let me, can I have a little bit of light here? How many of you can do this? I'm going to do a simple thing. If you can do it, please raise your hand. If you cannot do it, keep your hands down. How many of you can do this? Please raise your hand and keep your hand up. Let me see Nairite Sports, how many of you are going to... All you need to do is throw this from here and catch here. How many of you can do? Hey, what, what is happening to all these MBBS students here, you know, or interns now? Keep your hand up because I'm going to do the next step. If you can do it, continue to keep your hand up. If you cannot do it, professors are allowed to put their hands up. Dr. Surya, we are learners, you know. If you can do the next step, continue to keep your hand up. If you can't do it, put your hand down. So how many of you can do this? If you can do, continue to keep your hand up. Naira, it's come on. Dhansham is watching. I'm all hands down. I see one, two, three, four, some more hands. Parents are also allowed to put your hands up. <laughs> if you can do the third step, continue to put your hand up. If you cannot do it, put your hand down. How many of you can do this? You know? So yeah, let me see how many hands up. One. Anybody else? People on the top are also allowed to put their hands up. 
Two. Fantastic. Any girl or there are two guys here? Come up on stage. Come quickly. <laughs> You're a juggler? No, no, no. Just for practice. I can't do it for long. You know juggling? Kind of. Kind of. Okay. I need one or two more volunteers also who have not juggled before. So two of these guys, I know they'll be able to juggle. Just one or two. Dhansham, come up. Quickly. There are a few lessons that we need to understand why I'm talking about uh, uh, this juggling. A couple of lessons in learning. And one important thing is any success. This is a chart. You have to try it for some time and uh, a few trials. So none of us can cycle the first time we get on a bicycle. None of us can swim if you jump into the pool. So learning has its disadvantages and the learning is. So who's going to try juggling first, Gansham or? A few lessons learned quickly, keep observing, okay? <laughs> so this guy, what's your name? So Balram. Balram has, uh, have you juggled before? Sometime you've tried? Just tried. Okay, so he's done it before. Let's give Ghansham, you've tried juggling before? So he's never tried before, okay? First time. So let's see what Ghansham does, you know? Uh, <laughs> okay, you want to do it too? You yeah, can try too. But uh, uh, it's not going to be this, it's going to be this. Okay. Okay, two if you want to do all three. So what happens is, can I just go on the side a little? Every time you do something for the first time, you're going to fail. Never worry about this kind of failure because it's going to be a problem. Next, who's going to do next? These are two jugglers. <laughs> so it doesn't work, isn't it? So whether you're doing laparoscopy or general surgery, anything, it's not going to work. If you follow that rule. Yeah, anybody else, uh, Balram, you want to do with uh, one more? <laughs> so you, you can actually do this. The light is very little here. And you can do this with the left. I'm a right-handed person. So And then you can do this. <laughs> You. Okay, quick lessons. I'm not a juggler, I'm a laparoscopic surgeon, but juggling, <laughs> juggling helps me in using my left hand to, uh, you know, to become ambidextrous. And so all of us are going to fail the moment. Hey, thank you very much. Balram Ghansham, uh, Balram and your name Amir. is? Amir. Amir. You know what, you must give these people a hand because <laughs> one of the one of the rules for success is you should not worry about people laughing at you when you attempt something new and you fail. Because it just indicates that you tried that, you did not succeed. If it is something worthwhile, you should go ahead and become competent in it till people start getting impressed. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, there are two simple cardinal rules which are important that you have to learn. Number one is that nothing absolutely nothing works the first time so just stay on persist persevere and you'll be able to do it and the second rule is that it's juggling that failed you haven't failed as a person understand that very clearly it's not that you attempted so you are a failure uh -huh, you just that event failed but as a person you are still very successful and very good so once you get that thing cleared you are not bothered about uh, failing at all and your successes continue to happen so do not ever get scared of failure and do not worry at all about people laughing at your failure because everybody is going to criticize and laugh at you identify one skill i think amit uh, said that beautifully i call it the signature skill become very very good at one thing and look at all these people you can identify what they are good at so who, who was that guy Vishwanath Anand. This guy was Abhinav Abhinav. So they picked up one thing and they became excellent in what they wanted. So you recognize this guy? Michael Phelps. He got uh, 8 gold medals in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. And when he came out of the water with the 8 gold medal, somebody, one journalist, a young girl went up to him and said, Michael, this must be your lucky day. You've got 8 gold medals today. You know what Michael said? He said, luck was not designed for such achievements. <laughs> 
He said, I have worked hard for eight years. And you say I was lucky to have got eight gold medals? Nobody, absolutely nobody becomes lucky and gets a gold medal. We have 1.1 billion people in India. How many of us become lucky and keep getting gold medals in the Olympics? You know? Oh, you have to work very, very hard to achieve a gold medal. So coming back to you know, taking responsibility, I sold off this bike and then started doing well in laparoscopy. I, I got this world record. You know, I'm giving you the trail of events. Had I not gone to Germany for training, had I, I don't know what would have happened. But this was the Guinness world record I got in 2000. And then in 2009, I got one more world record for taking out the largest uterus. And uh, then we started 3D laparoscopies. I was one of the first few people. It all started with that one decision I took that, hey, you know, motorcycle, hai, I can always buy another motorcycle. And then I finally did that on 10th of January. <laughs> so one of my friends who was the former dean of this hospital, Sanjay Oak, he said, Rakesh, you keep giving these lectures. Ek motorcycle khari dalna, khari rak dena, you know? So last month, 10th of January, I went and picked up a bullet again. How many of you have ridden a bullet? You know, the, the sound of that bike, it, it used to haunt me, you know. Thak, 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 at a signal. So I used to be in my car and at every signal somebody came on a bullet. I would look at the bike and say, ha, ah, bullet hai. You know? <laughs> and I bought a 500cc bullet now. I think quickly self-control is now said, you know, your uh, ability to delay gratification and self-control is a more important parameter than IQ. Uh, it was amazing to read that in one of the research studies. So we must get uh, I will, I won't and I want phenomena because there are centers in the brain. I will exercise, I won't eat cupcakes and I want to become healthy. Now you can start applying that principle for everything. I'm going to rush in because I have a few minutes more only. So you have to get a little balance. Uh, I don't know how many of you recognize this guy. The other swimmer who had got 1972 Munich Olympics, who got seven gold medals. His record was only broken by Michael Phelps. Yes, Mark Spitz got seven gold medals and he said, the most important tool for success is the belief that you can succeed. So get out into the outer world <laughs> and believe that you are going to do very well. And like I mentioned, Nairites are going to do well. Please take it. Don't ignore these things. They are absolutely necessary for maintaining a good willpower. That will help you. So I, I run the marathons also. I've run the four full marathons. A lesson, uh, a few lessons that I learned running the marathon. And one of them was, I always ran with air pressure. You know, Nike has those Adidas, Nike have got those air cushion shoes and all. Expensive shoes. I would go out and buy those and all. And say, you know, I can run on concrete roads of Mumbai because of my shoes. Until I saw this guy running bare feet. He ran 21 kilometers. He was less than 18 years old. I was impressed. I said, wow. Then this guy went Birje ran the 42 kilometers bare feet. And I learned a lesson. I said, we must never complain of what you have and what you don't have. If you are motivated, you should be able to do that. This guy is blind. If you notice very carefully, he's got a little thread there. And this man is the pacer. So he's actually helping him run. He ran the entire. So when one of the races, I was behind this guy. And my motivation was looking at this guy and saying, oh my gosh, if this guy is blind and he's running, all I need to do is just follow him, you know, just keep running after him. And normally I would slow down, walk a little and then run. But with this guy running in front of me, the motivation was phenomenal. So get inspired by people. Let somebody, you know, get you a little ahead in life with inspiration. But interesting thing was that uh, this was one of my best quotes that I had. 4 hours, 47 minutes and 35 seconds. This was 2005. My only problem was my overall ranking was 184. And amongst the male ranking was 150. That means 34 women were running ahead of me. I just couldn't digest that. <laughs> so I, I worked harder on myself. But uh, uh, this year, Ramalu came first. And when I came back to Azad Medan, he was sitting there with his gold medal and with his check, I don't know, for 10 lakhs or 12 lakhs of rupees. I went and congratulated him and I said, he's one of those Kenyan guys, you know, black, tall guys, lanky, absolutely. I said, Ramalu, congratulations. You, you know, you stood first. How long did you take? So he looked at it, he said, he said, two hours, nine minutes and some seconds, you know. And I looked at my certificate. I said, oh my gosh, four hours. So he casually asked me, and how much time did you take? I said, I took four hours, 47 minutes and 35 seconds. 
So he sat up a little. He said, you mean you were running for 4 hours and 47 minutes? I can never do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think time is another resource that all of us have equivalent to what anybody else has. So we have 1,440 minutes in a day, 5,25,600 minutes in a year. That's it. Anybody else also has the same time, isn't it? It's how you utilize the time that really decide how successful you are going to become. A couple of things on thinking. I think your thoughts are controlling your life, you know, and you control your thoughts. So actually you're controlling your own life. You must remember that. So keep thinking of only what we, you know, uh, normally call positive thoughts. Don't look at problems in life. Shad Hamstetter wrote this entire book. What do you say when you talk to yourself? So even now when you are sitting and talking to yourself, what are you talking to yourself? We have approximately 54,000 thoughts in a day. And if you start talking to yourself well, like a good friend, you know, it will help you get ahead in life. So let's look at, it is very important with all our qualifications. You know, Fred Lee wrote a book, if Disney ran your hospital, what would they do differently? And they said nine and a half things. I'll tell you about only one thing. And they said, while we think that the patients come to us for our competence and skills and our brilliant awards and certificates, patients are only looking at courtesy. And they come to doctors because they like their doctors, you know, and the doctor is good. So he may be skilled. All doctors are nearly equally qualified. But we have to be good to our patients. Please never ever forget that. In conclusion, I think many of us feel that, you know, we are in this state like this engine. You just can't get ahead in life. You are stuck for whatever reason, you know. And my question to all of us who think they are stuck is that how did you get into this place in the first place, you know? How did you get into this situation? So let's not allow ourselves to get there. All of us have problems, CT problems, PG problems, money problems, books problems, traveling problems, commuting problems, car, motorcycle, all kinds of problems. The only place where there are no problems are six feet under the ground. <laughs> How many of us would like to get there, you know? So I think celebrate your problems. We must get up every morning, like Asha said. Every day that you don't find a chalk line around you is a brilliant day. So in conclusion, I think Michelangelo said this. He said the greatest tragedy in life is not that you aim too high and miss it. The biggest tragedy in life is that you aim too low and achieve it. Thank you very much and God bless all of you.